live from Music City, Nashville, Tennessee. This is your motivational, sensational, inspirational, educational, keenly awaited, highly anticipated edition of How to Day Trade in Real Life, part two. Ladies and gentlemen, traders from around the world, how is everyone doing on this fine, fantastic day? If you're here in recording land, hello. If you're here live, here on the computers, welcome. Thanks so much for showing up. I'm excited about tonight's program. Woo! Type in a one if you can hear me okay. I'm going to pull my little uh, chat pane over here just so the people in the recording can see that I'm actually not making it up. There are people here live. <laughs> I mean, I hear voices in my head sometimes, but uh, people are here. You know, we're chatting together. Again, apologies uh, for those of you who, are, if you were not able to get in live last class, uh, webinar got full, so I had to break out the checkbook and make sure that that didn't happen again. So thanks for being here. There's already over 106 people here live right now. So you are part of the party. Thank you so much for being here. You absolutely rock. All right. Well, tonight's class, pretty exciting stuff. We're going to talk about how to actually trade these gaps. So in class one, as a really nice review, we talked about the bearish gap and go, the bullish gap and go, the bearish retest gap, and the bullish retest gap. Those are the gaps that we chat about just last class. So in this particular class, we're gonna talk about how to actually trade those, what to look for, when to get in, how long to stay, that type of thing. Um, before I dive right in though, I just want to pull something up really quick. I thought you guys might like some testimonials, if you will, of, uh, you know, just some stuff. So let me kind of pull up the video that I posted yesterday. I just want to just kind of bring this to your attention because there's two things I want to talk about. And since we're here, I figured we might as well just have it out there. So um, I got a comment. And again, the person who made this comment is totally fine. I know where your heart's at. I get it. I just want to let you know this stuff is for real. Right? The reason I offer this for free is because this is real life trading. Our mission is to enrich lives and this stuff really can work. If day trading or if trading in general doesn't work for you, there's going to be something in your mind that you got to figure out, right? Just like any part of life, just any aspect of life. If you're like, oh, life doesn't work. This whole money thing and wealth thing is just made up. It's a conspiracy. Right? If it's all about you, if it's all about what's going on internally, that's what's going to help you become the person you want to be, which is a successful person that you can give to your family, you can help out, you can donate, you can be philanthropic, you can be charitable, you can really help and enrich this world and impact this world. So I'm going to scroll down really quickly. And uh, one of the first comments I got, um, you know, when I posted this video is you can't make money day trading. And again, I get it. I totally understand. There are no, there's no reason not to be skeptical, honestly, when we're talking about this, when we're talking about day trading and the stock market. So what I want to bring to your attention really quick is this little note right here. Uh, I'm just going to scroll this over. This is actually a picture that I took uh, not too terribly long ago, and I'll kind of show you the date. It's going to be a little bit blurry. Uh, the top left-hand corner, I'll zoom in on the recording, the post edits, May 17th, 2017. So this is just a few weeks back. And I love this note. I've never gotten a letter like this before, but I hope that you all can kind of read this. Ready? Congratulations on paying off your mortgage. All I'm saying is, ladies and gentlemen, this stuff can work. It has set me on a financial stratosphere that I've never thought I'd possibly be on before. It's something that has a mindset and a capability and a teamwork that's involved. That's what real life trading is all about. It's all about trading as a team, focusing and helping other people, enriching lives. It's not just about me staying here saying, hey, here's how much money I'm gonna make. Look at me do all these really cool things. We have a lot of stats to back up what we do, how we trade, what we focus on. And the fact of you know not having debt, no credit card debt, no mortgage, all the debts that a lot of people struggle with every single day, not having those can be a huge weight off of your shoulders. So just something to keep in mind, it's a huge opportunity, this day trading thing, it can happen, it can work, and it is something that I've outlined in the reallifetrading.com ebook that I created four years ago called Retire on 3K. If you get a chance to go, it's really the exact step-by-step -step process that I talk about in that ebook, just showing how you can use day trading and specifically the bearish gap and go to just slowly chip away at that mountain. 
right, folks? I'm not saying it to be boisterous or braggy. I'm just saying, hey, this stuff works. It's legitimate. It's happening. I'm real. You're real. Let's do this, all right? Type it a two if you're ready to go. I'm going to bring this over here to the... Uh, here we go. All right, so we got some twos. Woo, they're coming rolling in. So I'm gonna pull over some gaps. We're gonna get right into it right now. Um, I'm gonna pull up a ticker, ticker somewhat HPE. We're just gonna go back in time a little bit and just kind of practice this. So I'm gonna zoom in on HPE. This is Hewlett Packard Enterprises, ticker symbol HPE. And I'm gonna point to the gap and then I'm gonna do a poll, okay? So here's the gap right here. Gap action. This stock gapping down. And I'm gonna do a poll in about three seconds, let you look at it really quick. And I want you to tell me what type of gap that is via poll. You ready? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and launch the poll. So if you're on an iPad or a phone or a desktop, you should be able to vote. Again, there's 124 people here. Last night, we were at capacity. What type of gap is that? And you can just go ahead and vote it in. Uh, if you're watching this on the recording, it's okay. <laughs> you can always write it in the YouTube comment section below. Or you can email me if you want, you know, if you just want to, or write it down in a quick piece of paper. What type of gap is this? All right, I'm going to close the poll in five, four, three, two, one, ending the poll. All right, so I'm going to share the results with all of you. So here's the results uh, 61, I'm sorry, 76% of you said this is a bearish gap and go. That is, in fact, the correct answer. It was a white candle gapping down. White candle gapping down. So let me stop sharing this. Give me three seconds. All right, stop sharing. I'm gonna move this over here. So if we're looking at this, let's first of all notice that this gap is not necessarily all that large, right? It's not a huge gap, meaning it's not a gap that um, is monstrously de demoralizing. But let's draw a support level because we're going to be talking about location. Location is key when you are focusing on gap. So I talked about yesterday the why, understanding why this gap is going to move. And that's important. We're actually going to look at some that happened today, right, in the actual day trading room because in the day trading room, we did very, very well uh, today thanks to, to Brad's help and him instructing us and training us and helping us. So HPE, great gap down. It was a bearish gap and go. This red line represents a support level. So when we are looking for gaps, ladies and gentlemen, we are looking for gaps that are gapping below. If it's a bearish gap, we're looking for gaps that are gapping below a support. Truly gapping down so that everyone is trapped, so that everyone is losing money. Right, so if traders do have a stop in place, we know it got hit type of thing. So let me do another really quick poll. Um, what'd you guys do today? I'd just like to know. So the poll is, did you look for gaps this morning? I got about 19 emails this morning saying, oh, Jeremy, I'm so pumped. I'm so excited. This is the gap that I saw, and I'm gonna show a few that came up today. We're gonna talk about those. What'd you guys do this morning? It's okay, again, there's, there's no wrong answer to this. I'm just wondering. This is just me sitting here as a teacher, teacher wondering what you, uh, what you what all did. All right, so I'm gonna close this poll in five, four, three, two, one. All right, in the poll. And here are the results for the poll. So 48% of you did look for gaps this morning. 40% uh, did not. And then 13% said I kind of looked at them later in the day. I was busy during market open. Brandon said he was at work. Ryan says he went to work. Hey, I get it. Totally understand. Totally understand. Let's get you guys out of that nine to five job if you don't want to be there. If you do want to be there, that's totally fine. Some people love your jobs, right? In fact, I encourage you to stay at your job as long as you can to make sure that you really, really got this stuff down because day trading for a living is a difficult animal. It is a difficult, difficult beast. All right. Ronnie says, tried last night after the class. I love it. Okay. Let's look at another gap. This one was today. Today, ladies and gentlemen, today. So this is A-M-B-A. -A. Another poll. Another poll? Another poll. Let's look at this for about seven seconds. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, what type of gap is this? What type of gap is this? T, great job mitigating your risk, well done. 
Now, this particular type of gap, this one is the one that there's a lot of people searching for. People search for this gap all the time. And this is, and let me just be frank, the harder of all the gaps to trade because it's the fastest. So newer day traders, especially if you've never day traded before, these are the type of gaps that you want to find, but they are the most difficult to trade because they are the quickest. You have to have everything already ready to go, set up, and locked and loaded. So you gotta be looking at this before the market even gaps, before it even happens. You have to have this on your radar, set up, ready to go, entry stop, target, everything planned before market open, usually. Okay, so before the market is even open, you gotta get this ready to go. All right, so I'm gonna end the poll. Here's the results. So the results are 65% say bearish gap and go. That is the correct answer. That's the correct answer, simply because this was a white bullish candle gapping down. And it did clear a support. What support did it clear? Well, if we draw a support line right there, so notice the resistance from this candle, resistance from this candle, uh, obviously the lower shadow of this bullish candle yesterday. Now, it didn't, I agree, it did not open below this support right here but it did break below that support at some point during the day. So that would have been a really, really good opportunity to trade. All right, let's do one more. Uh, I will come back to this one. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up ticker symbol FLO. FLO. And I want you to go ahead and type in uh, this particular gap because this doesn't look like very much right now. I get it. it. Doesn't look that impressive. The very small gap. What type of gap do we have on FLO? Ricky said, sup, Jeremy, I'm here with Mikey. What's up? Ricky and Mikey from Australia. Welcome, gentlemen. Thanks for being here, bro. <laughs> so this is a small one. This is a smaller gap. Wasn't very big. There actually wasn't a massive amount of gaps out there today. So if you were looking, there was probably about 20. Um, and out of about 20 of those, four were really good. And this was, this was one of the list. Uh, exactly. This is a bearish retest gap. Bearish retest gap. Why was it a bearish retest gap? Very simple. Black candle gapping down. Now, we're going to talk about this one for just a moment. We're going to stay on this for a little bit because what I'm about to do is we're going to talk time frames. Okay? So here we go. Time frames. First, analyze. Well, let me put in brackets. If you've never seen the stock before, pull up the weekly chart. The reason I pull up the weekly chart, let me just see what the stock is doing. What the heck is happening? So here's the weekly chart. I pull up the weekly. I just want to know what this thing is doing. And when I pull up the weekly, it helps me determine how quickly I should get in or how quickly I should get out. So FLO right over the long term is kind of what bullish to neutral would you guys agree this is the weekly charts on the long term it's kind of bullish to neutral uh but really for the last few years this stock has been going I and mean, since 2013 it's been going pretty sideways overall i mean yes you got some huge ups and downs but overall it's going relatively sideways so all that helps me to know is okay if this thing is going sideways then you know there's no real trend on this i'm gonna get in and get out pretty quickly uh, no swing trade. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do my business and move on. I only look at the weekly chart sometimes just to see if it's a weird looking stock. What's a weird looking stock? You might wonder. Uh, something like this. <laughs> okay, this is a weird looking stock. You, you guys see the difference between like dry shits, which is just never trade this thing, and uh, FLO. All right. So you know it's a normal stock. So very first, if I've never seen the stock in my entire life, I'll pull up the weekly chart just to see what the heck it's doing. Uh, next, uh, I will look at the daily time frame. Daily time frame, and I will analyze the gap type, find support and resistance. Okay, so there's the next step. Let me kind of show what I mean on this. Uh, I'm gonna draw two lines on this particular stock. I want, I want you to tell me which support line do you think I cared the most about today while looking at this particular gap on FLO? 
Which one do you think I cared about, red or purple? You're going to have to type this one in. I don't have a poll for this one. Which support line do you think I cared the most about? The answer is purple. Yeah, I care the most about purple because red, we had already broken that line. Right? Red, we've already, we've already broke through it. So that's like null and void. Now, when I'm looking on the daily chart, so let's go ahead and throw this in here. When I'm looking on the daily charts, daily time frame, I analyze about two years of data max. So when I'm analyzing the hourly chart, I'm, only, I'm sorry, the daily chart, I'm only looking about two years of data. So what that means is you can see on this screen right now, we're looking at about October 2016. So if I scooted this whole thing over, you know, we can see some more data over here. But overall, I'm only looking at about two years of data. Now you can look at more, but again, that's where the weekly chart's from. If you can see that the stock is obviously gapping into a massive support or resistance on the weekly chart, then you can kind of move on. But I'm looking at the daily time frame. Then uh, I'm gonna look at the hourly time frame. Then I'm gonna look at the 15 minute. Then I'm gonna look at the five minute. Then I'm gonna draw support resistance on the hourly using extended hours data. So that is, ladies and gentlemen, that is my step every single day. I'm looking at, I'll look at the weekly if I've never heard of the stock before, boom. Looking at the daily, what type of gap is it? Is it a retest or is it a gap and go? If it's a retest, what does that mean to me? That means I'm gonna wait for something, All right? That means I'm gonna give something some time. I'm not gonna rush in. If it's a gap and go, I'm gonna look to be a little bit more aggressive on the trade. If it's a retest gap, I'm gonna give it a little bit of time. Then I'm gonna analyze, all right, find some support, find some resistance, make sure the location is good, make sure we're not at a support level, make sure we're not at a resistance level for gapping up. Then I look at the hourly 15 and five with the extended hours turned on. Now, if you're using TradingView, which is the charting software I'm using right now, you do have to pay for extended hours. Um, on most charting softwares, you have to pay for extended hours. If you're using a broker like Thinkorswim or another broker, sure, uh, you might not have to trade for that, but I will suggest using extended hours. It'll give you a really good perspective of support and resistance. Brian says, when you say give it some time, you do not mean not today, maybe tomorrow. You, you do mean not today, maybe tomorrow. I mean, we're talking about day trading here, Brian, right? So we're, I'm talking about I'm giving it time. I'm talking like 15 minutes rather than, yeah, exactly, because it, it's a day trade. So yeah, I'm mean, giving a little bit of, a little bit of time. So here's the hourly chart. So when I'm drawing the hourly chart, okay, so I'm looking at the hourly. And again, I'm gonna use the extended hours on this chart. And so for right now, I'm gonna draw some support and resistance on the hourly chart. Now, I've talked about um, support plenty of times with each and every one of you here. Remember, this is like how you're gonna decorate your house. There is no perfect answer. Just give me some lines. No more than three or four on your list because once you have some support resistance on your screen, right, that's the one that I would draw right there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the candles that I looked at to draw each line. I only use three candles, ladies and gentlemen, that was it. Those are the three candles that I looked at to draw those three lines. Remember, there's no such thing as a perfect support or resistance. There's nothing inherently flawless about my lines that I just drew. Your line might be different by a few pennies, up or down, side to side, it doesn't matter. Draw your support resistance, you have a good idea of what's gonna go, what's gonna happen from there. And then this is gonna give you a really good piece of information. So now that I have my support resistance lines on the hourly chart, does anyone remember what time frame I go to next? Now remember, this is before the market opens. So we're gonna look at one of these examples, uh, I believe tonight, we'll just kind of create one. But Jeff, Linda, everyone is saying the 15 minute chart. Yeah, exactly. So now we hop into the 15 minute. So we hop into the 15 minute chart. Okay, so here's the 15 minute chart. This is so beautiful, it still gives me chill bumps. Oops, I didn't mean to draw that line, I'm sorry. So now we're looking at the 15 minute chart and you'll notice that this particular uh, stock in yellow, this yellow part is the pre-market data. So there was actually no real pre-market awareness that this thing was gapping. 
we didn't find this stock until about 30 minutes after the market opens, which just goes to show you, even if you are a professional day trader, you don't have to be there at open. Sure, there's a lot of gaps that happen at the open and there's a lot of fun activity in the first 30 minutes. But this just goes to show you, we didn't see this gap at market open. This came up on uh, just some gap down screeners, the same ones I showed you yesterday, 30 minutes or so uh, when we were looking at them after market open. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a line. You all remember what I'm about to draw. And after we do this, we're gonna go do a bullish example of this. Do you all remember what I'm about to draw? I'm about to draw the retest curve for bearish trade. All right. You type in a three if you remember that from yesterday, either watch the recording or you were here live. So that's the retest curve. Remember, you're looking for that. And keep in mind, you are trying to play this area right here. All right, you're looking at that area to play the retest trade. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little drawing over here. And I'm just going to move it right there. Check it out. What do you guys think? Pretty cool, right? It's the same exact curve that we drew yesterday. I mean, that's amazing. That's amazing to me. Now, here's the best part of this. Something that you're gonna have to learn as a trader. This is a huge takeaway from this particular class, ladies and gentlemen, ready? You will never know for sure if a trade is going to work or not. You got to give up that control. There are only a few things you can control in the market, very few. But what can you control? You can control when you get in. You can control how much you lose. You can control what stock you trade. You can control how many shares you get into. You can control when you pull the button. You can control your stock. You can control all of that. You cannot control if you're going to lose money on the trade. Ladies and gentlemen, do not worry about if the trade is going to work or not. Remember one of my quotes, everything works in the stock market, just not all the time, right? If you get this exact pattern that I'm teaching you right now to work, I don't know, 12 times in an entire month, you're gonna make good money. You're gonna do pretty well for yourself. If you can get this little pattern to just work 12 times a month, I mean, that's, you know, even with losses and everything, if you can just get it to work out that's somewhere between six and seven R a month, it's not that bad, right? Just don't lose more than your risk. And we're gonna talk about that momentarily. So now, does anyone remember what time frame I go on after the 15 minute chart? Does anybody know? We're gonna to go to the five minute, exactly. We're gonna to go to the five minute. So let's talk about exactly how we took this trade. So this is that wave rotation on a five minute. Do you see it now? Pretty sweet stuff. So this is fractal, right? So you're taking a bigger time frame, the 15 minute, we're gonna zoom into the five. Now I do realize there are other time frames to trade below the five minute chart. Three minute, two minute, one minute. I'm gonna help you all with that in a little, uh, in future classes, more advanced day trading. For right now, I want you to trust me on this one. If you cannot day trade the five minute or the 15 minute chart profitably, it's gonna be very, very hard, extremely difficult, mentally and physically arduous, even emotionally and spiritually draining to trade the one and two and three minute charts. Maybe the three is okay, but the one and two, oh man, bananas. Here's some stats really quick that might shock you. Uh, give me six seconds, I'm just gonna write it in here. Approximately 70% of my trades that I take personally are after the first 30 minutes. Even though, yes, gap and goes do exist and they move quickly and they're a lot of fun when they work, 70% of my trades are after the first 30 minutes. It's because things have calmed down, things are waiting, spreads are smaller, volatility is less crazy. Because remember folks, I don't care about you making money. What do I care about? <laughs> I don't want you to lose a lot of money, right? I know a lot of you are probably saying, well, Jeremy, are you supposed to make money as a day trader? Yeah, but if you can day trade for two years and just not lose all of your money, 
then you're gonna learn a lot. But what's the point of you trading for two months and getting really, really excited and thinking you're gonna make tons of money just to lose it all? Does that make any sense? Right, I would rather just tell you the truth and say, hey, it's gonna be a lot of work. I don't want you to lose a lot of money. Think about it, two years, it's not that long. It's like you're getting an associate's degree in something. I mean, two years, come on. Two years to learn a life-changing, life-altering skill that you can literally use anywhere in the world as long as there's internet. They can make you money in a click of a, a click of a button, you can make money, right? So give it some time. <laughs> You're not gonna, it, get rich slowly, is what I'm saying. That way you can handle it. It's a great Jim Cramer book, by the way. Get rich slowly. Okay. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk now about how I knew how to play this retest. And this is gonna be the best part of the whole day. I want someone to try to read my mind. Here's a purple line. Now, once this chart appeared, okay, I was able to draw this line on the first five minutes based on the lower shadow of that candle. Now, I would love to tell you that I took the trade right here. I would love to tell you that in fact, but I did not. We did not take the trade right there. It didn't happen. All right, would you agree? I would love to say that, but can anyone tell me why I did not take the trade right there? Why didn't we take the trade right there? Daryl says, why not? Daryl says, I missed class one. Is it recorded somewhere? Uh, it might be. Potentially. So a lot of you are saying confirmation. No, it wasn't anything to do with confirmation. In fact, I actually kind of want you guys to get the, rid of the term confirmation. I don't even use that term, confirmation. You'll actually, if you go back to a lot of my videos, I very, very, very rarely talk about confirmation. Confirmation is you creating a plan in advance and then following it when it's happened. The reason I didn't take that trade right there is because the risk reward was poor. Right? I just told you I drew a support line based on the shadow of this candle. If I, got, if I got in with a stop here, with an entry right here, it was a good trade. It was just the risk reward wasn't that amazing. It would have worked. I agree on that. Now, in hindsight, it would have worked. I didn't know it was going to work, but the risk reward wasn't that amazing. That's the only reason I didn't take that trade. What if you know we got something totally different? What if it retested like this? and you get that reversal signal up here, right? Entry, stop, you got that plan, and then it rolls over, sure, right? Better risk reward. So let's talk, let's talk through the sentiment of this. I thought to myself, okay, this is a retest. Wait for the retest. Why in the world would I say that? Well, because it was a retest gap on the daily, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in time. I'm gonna scoot, uh, I'm gonna scoot this stock forward just a little bit so you can kind of see what I was looking at. So when this stock broke the low of the day, this is the breakthrough that I really, really want everyone here to have tonight. This was called a retest gap. Did I take the breakout of the support? Yes or no? Bow, 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 bow. Could you make it shorter? Uh, let's just try. See if that's better. Oh, I'm mixed. It's mixed. There's a lot of people saying, yes, I took the breakout right there. All right. Now, everyone who's in my trading room, did I take the breakout right there? <laughs> All right. Now, now so I want everyone who trades with me is saying no. They were giving, uh, giving everyone else a chance. So everyone who trades with me actively, no, I did not take the breakout. Why on earth would I not take that breakout? Jeremy, it's screaming in the face. Get embarrassed. Look how far it's going. Can anyone remind me, please, why we didn't take the break out of that trade right there? It's called a retest gap. <laughs> Don't chase the trade. You've already missed it. Right? If you were going to play the retest, that was it. So if you didn't play that, you already missed it. All right? Why would you get in right there? The trade has already moved. You are chasing it at this point. If you take the trade right there, what's happening, my friends? If you take the trade right there, you are trading in the present. 
You're trading the present. You have FOMO, fear of missing out. I don't want you to trade in the present. I want you to trade in the future. So when you are day trading, I never, never want you to ask the question, what's the stock doing right now? Don't ask that question. You're already going to lose. Just go ahead and mail me a check. What I want you to do is I want you to sit down, look at the trade and say, what's going to happen 30 minutes from now? What's going to happen 30 minutes from now? If you're worrying about the right now, you are trading in the present and you will lose. When you are day trading, this stuff moves fast. Bam, 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 bam. Right? It's going quick. So it, it's moving so fast. If you're a brand new trader, you're going to get lost. You're going to get in that tractor beam. You're going to get scared. And, you're, and the market's going to do what? The market's going to just drag you along. It's like going into an ocean with a spoon saying, oh, yeah, I can empty this whole thing. No, you're not. No, you, no you're not. You've got to get in the ocean and go with the waves. There's no reason to sit there and like punch every wave that comes. Like if you're a surfer, you don't surf against the wave, you surf with the wave. What I mean by that is you cannot beat the stock market's momentum, energy, capacity. It's too big. You're just one human. So what you have to do in this situation is you have to wait for the retest. You have to look at this candle and say, all right, here's what it's doing. Here's what I'm going to do 10 minutes from now or 30 minutes from now or an hour from now and then Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. I know I'm sounding like I'm preaching a little bit, and this is weird, but give me a second. Here's what I want you to do. Biggest takeaway from tonight. When you say, this is what I'm going to do, you do that. <laughs> you say the word, and then you do the word. You say what you're going to do, and then you do what you say, you, you, you do what you say you're gonna do. I'm not saying that right. You say what you're gonna do, and then you do what you say. There we go. Is that the characteristic of a really successful person? Would you guys agree? Someone who says what they're going to do and then they, they do what they're going to say. I'm going to do this. And then they go do it. I'm going to do this. And they go do it. You have to build that discipline. I can teach you any strategy in the world. It doesn't matter what it is. I can teach you anything. If it's in the stock market, I can teach it to you. The fact of the matter is that'll do us no good if you don't do what you say you're going to do. All right? Take that with a grain of salt because you're going to lose on trades. That's a fact. Don't worry about losing on a trade. Don't worry about losing money. Don't worry about being wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, all of those things are absolute concrete guarantees. Daryl said it's an if-then process. Yes, it's a very simple. If this happens, then I'm going to do this. And when you're in the present, it's going to feel very uncomfortable so let's go through that example right now. Here's how you would set this trade up. If it's a retest gap and you've done the homework and this is the stock that you want to trade and you like this trade, the stock is breaking down. You're going to take in your broker and you're going to say, okay, broker, this is an old support, new resistance. Old support, new resistance. I'm going to short it at that old resistance, new, uh, old resistance, new support, and I'm going to place my stop above these candles, above this recent pivot. I'm gonna place it above where we got this rotation down. So the high of this candle was 1840, so you would have had your stop at 1841. You would have put a limit sell into your broker and then you do some calculations. This is the best part of risk mitigation right here. For you at Real Life Trading, if you have watched any of my videos, you know exactly what I'm about to say. If you've never watched my videos before, you're about to learn something new. Don't think about trading with, about, with money. When you associate trading with money, you probably more than likely are going to lose. <laughs> because money has a very emotional, visceral impact for the majority of people around the world. If you have money, you have power. If you have money, you have success. If you have money, you have fame. You can do a lot of things. That's what a lot of our brains tell us. So when you lose money, you get upset. When you make money, you win. You're happy. You don't want to have that mindset. If you want to think about it, think about it like currency. Say the word currencies. Hey, I have 500 currencies in the bank. That means nothing to your brain. The word currency has no impact. Right? There's no religious text that say anything about the word currencies in it. So deep down inside, emotionally, this word can help you kind of block the gap of what your brain says is right and wrong 
so that you can just trade the charts. Because money is the reason that the majority of traders, and I do mean the vast majority of traders, can virtually trade profitably, but when it's real money on the line, they lose. So if you want to use the term currencies from now on, I, tr I can assure you it'll massively and vastly change the way you approach uh, money. You know, so just say I like currency, right? Here's a quick fact, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not going to go down this road. This is the last thing I'm going to say about it. There's enough money on this planet for every single person to have one billion currencies, one billion U.S. dollars to be, ex to be exact. That's, that's how much money there is in the world. There's enough money for every single person on the planet to have one billion U.S. dollars. Money's not the issue. There's plenty of money, right, Fred? Money is boundless. Go get you some, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about risk. I told you I don't want you to focus on making money. I want you to focus on not losing currencies. <laughs> don't worry about making money. Don't lose currencies. So what we're going to do is we're going to trade something called an R unit, an R value. An R simply takes the fundamental approach of how much money you're making and it makes it an even playing field. It's called an R unit. R stands for risk. Risk is usually one to 2% of your account. If you're a brand new trader, fall on the left hand side of this, 1% of your account. So if you have $20,000 that you want to trade with, welcome to the club. You have 20 a $200 risk unit. And if you want to make it smaller than 1%, you can. You can make it smaller if you want. It can go smaller. That's just like the normal. But if you want to make it 0 0.05 or 0 0.01 when you're starting out so that it's 200 currencies, whatever it is, okay? So this risk, this is usually the size of uh, your account, so that you would have to lose 100 trades in a row to blow out your entire account. Who's lost their entire account in five trades? I have. <laughs> Long time ago, but I did it. It definitely helped. So this strategy, you have to more or less have 100 trades go against you before you blow out your account, if you're doing it correctly. Does this mean it's going to take a long time to get where you want to go? Mm-hmm. Sure does. Takes a long time to get there. So in this situation, here is the formula, and I have this in plenty of my classes, so I'm gonna go through this semi quickly. If you have any questions about this, I have 497,000 classes, that's an exaggeration. I have a lot of classes uh, that talk about this in depth. But you're gonna take your R units equals an, a, a currency amount. Whatever currency amount you're comfortable with, which is again, Usually, let's say somewhere between zero and 2% of your account size, okay? So let's hypothetically say that is 100 currencies, right? Tell, say that word out loud. I'm telling you, the word currencies, it's just such a great word because no one, no brain cares about the word currencies. It's great. So you have 100 currencies. What you do is you take your entry and your stop, the difference between the two. And you divide that out of your risk amount. Okay? So in this situation, it should be 100 currencies. Your entry is what? $18.32. The difference of your stop is $18.41. So what's the difference between those two numbers? Divided out of 100. So it's 100 divided by 0 0.09 cents. Or 0 0.09 currencies. How much is that? 100 divided by 0 0.09. I know roughly how much it's gonna be. So it's 1,111 shares. What if you wanted to do a 10 cent stop or a 10 cent entry and you wanna take this entry down to 1831 so that you have 10 cents so it's an even number? That's fine as well. That's okay. So if you wanna drop that entry down so it's an even 10 cents, that also works. So you got your entry, you got your stop. Now, we know how many shares we're literally going to purchase, or in this example, how many shares we're going to short sell. We have an amount of risk that we are comfortable losing. We have created what's called certainty in the market, which is a very hard thing to do. And ladies and gentlemen, guess what? We are going to let the trade come to us. We no longer care if we miss the trade because the fact is, 
You are missing trades right now. You're gonna miss trades tomorrow. You're gonna miss trades every single day for the rest of your life. Don't worry about the trades you miss. You have to be in control. Another Jeremy Newsom quote, once you can control yourself, you can control the markets. It becomes so painlessly easy, yet difficult, right? Simple, but difficult. Trading, you're still gonna have times where you lose, doesn't matter. I was down like two and a half R until just today. So anyway, you're gonna have times where you're down, don't worry about that. Stick to your plan, trend, trade the plan, trade the future. So next candle, ladies and gentlemen, do we get in on the trade? Yes or no? Did we get filled on the trade? Yes or no? The answer is no. Now, here's the better part. Here's another rule for you. Uh, Luke, I hope, I hope this kind of answers your question a little bit. Notice how many bearish candles there are in a row, ladies and gentlemen. Sharon, we're going to get to that uh, in just a little bit. We're going to do a bullish example in just a moment. So we have four bearish candles in a row. Another one of my rules is if there's ever three or more candles of the same color, do not, well, let me do it the positive time. Three or more candles of the same color, wait for the retest anyway. <laughs> okay? If you have three or more candles of the same color, whatever color you have, black or white, red or green, doesn't matter. Wait for the retest anyway because you've already missed the trade. Sorry. If you get in now, you're chasing. Remember, number one thing I do not want you to do, I do not want you to chase. Bad, bad habit, that chasing. So we would wait for, even if, even if this was a bearish gap and go on the one minute chart, I would still wait for the retest at this point. Because if you hop in and you're afraid of missing the trade, if you have the fear of missing out, you're already in the present of the stock market. You're not thinking about the future. You're looking at what you're missing out on right now, but you're missing out on everything already. Um, someone says, if you already had a limit sell, would it have been filled by the broker? No, because you want, uh, the broker knows that you want the stock to come up to 1831 or higher before it gets filled. So it would not have been filled yet. The stock actually in this situation would have to print 1832 before you go short. Because a limit sell says I want to sell at 1831 or higher. Right? I will take a moment to pause. Um, Santi says broker will fill at any price. Any price above 1831 if it's a limit sell. That is correct. So um, stop limit versus stop market real life trading. If you need help with your broker orders, folks, that is the easiest thing to possibly need help with, which is great news. Go to stop limit orders versus stop market orders. I'll include that video in the description box below. It's gonna be very, very, very helpful to know, trust me. You're gonna need to know the difference of that. And then I'm also going to include the six main types of orders and brokers. I could talk about a class on this just by itself, but this is a very, very, very beginner concept. Incredible beginner concept, and don't feel bad if you don't understand it, it just is. That's like me telling you what the gas pedal and the brake pedal is in a car, okay? This is a very beginning concept, and you need to understand these very well in order to day trade. Very, very well. So remember, we're trying to get in short, ladies and gentlemen, at 1831. So we will not get filled on a broker unless the stock is above 1831. It just won't happen because we're trying to sell the stock short. So next candle, ladies and gentlemen, did we get filled, yes or no? The answer is no. So now we have five bearish candles in a row. Type in a six if two years ago you would short the trade right there, or two days ago, or two months ago, or two weeks ago, right? For me, I used to take that all the time, like, oh yeah, finally, it's now confirmed. Again, I think the word confirmation is a bad term. I really try not to use it that much because when you're waiting for confirmation, that means you're waiting too long, usually. <laughs> 98, that's a terrible statistic, I don't know. If you're, waiting, if you're saying I'm waiting for the term confirmation, that means you're gonna wait too long oftentimes because if it's confirmed, that means everyone's already in who wants to be in, right? This is now confirmation. If you ask me, confirmation is like, yeah, we're going lower. 
But this is not the time to get in. It's confirmed bearish, absolutely. So now you have to figure out where you're gonna get in. So we still have not been filled on the retest. We're still waiting, we're still waiting. Ladies and gentlemen, after placing the trade, 30 minutes before it occurred, 30 minutes, Ladies and gentlemen, the trade fills at the support. Richard says, which candle would you have entered the sell order for in this example? So I was just talking about that just a few moments ago. As soon as the candle closed below the support right there, I would have opened the limit sell order to sell at old resistance new support. So here's what I want everyone to understand. This is right here. This is the retest right there. This is the retest. Question, very important question. Do we know if the trade's gonna work from here, yes or no? No, we don't. We do not know. Biggest other question, does it matter if we know if the trade's gonna work? No, because we planned it 30 minutes ago. <laughs> That's what's most important. We planned this trade 30 minutes ago. Do you, do you kind of feel like a fortune teller? Well, not yet, because we don't know if the trade's gonna work. We have no idea. What about now? Are you freaking out? Are you scared? Are you worried? Are you upset? We got a bullish candle. Answer, no way. Why would you be worried? Not even close, it's only been five minutes. Why would you ever be worried? Because you have a defined set of your risk. You have some currencies that you're willing to risk and it's a very small amount, right? Why would you be worried? You got the stop in place. Let's see what happens. Next candle. Cool, I like that candle. Next candle, next candle. Pew. And then the trade starts tanking. So after about, uh, I don't know, 30 minutes, how long do we take before we move the stop on this one, Brad? About 20 minutes or so. After about 20 minutes, we got triggered in here and I'll point to it with a different arrow. Right around the pink arrow, right around here, we took the stop down from originally 1841 and moved it down right above the wick of this candle and this candle. Now, a lot of you are gonna ask, where's your target? Oh boy, how simple that is. Do you remember how much we were risking on the trade, ladies and gentlemen? Can you, does anyone remember? Go ahead and type it in. Either nine cents or 10 cents, one of the two, depending on which one you want to use. I gave examples for both. So let's say we were risking 10 cents. How could, how could we easily and quickly determine a target based on that? Any idea? Let's just multiply it times two, and we get two R. So two times nine cents is 18 cents. We're gonna subtract 18 cents from our entry, and we're gonna come up with our two R target. If you need a calculator for this, this is fine. If you need an Excel spreadsheet for this, that's also fine. But the two R target on this, mathematically, if you take 1831 and you subtract 18 cents, you're gonna come up with $18.13. $18.13, let's zoom out and see what happens. Oh, how weird the tides turn, ladies and gentlemen. How good would that have felt to take that trade and say, oh man, not only did it trade to my target, but it got to my target and bounced. That's a phenomenal trade. You do one of these a week, I mean seriously. You do one of these trades per week and you're gonna have insane breakthroughs in your trading. It's simple, but difficult. T said, is the target always 2R? For right now, if you're a beginning trader, yeah, make these 2R. And he says, do you do any of these trades with options? Uh, I do, but not on these stocks. If you wanna know anything about day trading weekly options, go to YouTube and type in day trading weekly options, and I'll give you the 411 for free on day trading with weekly options, Annie. So since you asked, I'll just go ahead and throw that in the chat pane for you. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, options only work on certain stock. You would have gotten hosed if you took this trade on an option. Wouldn't have worked at all, not even remotely. Yep. 
All right, so let's now go to a bullish setup and let's do the exact same thing. So um, let me go see bullish retest, B-L-U-E. So this is Bluebird Bio. And let's talk about some bullish retest gaps. So I'm gonna look at this one specifically. I mean, it happened just three or four days ago. White candle gapping up, it's a bullish retest gap, right? Um, Brad, uh, Luke, Brad's gonna answer your question. I'm sorry, Luke, Brad's gonna answer your question. I don't know if I said that the right way. Okay, so this is the candle that I'm looking on Bluebird Bio, white candle gapping up. White candle gapping up. So it's a bullish retest gap. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the exact same process we just looked at. We're gonna come in here on that day. So we're gonna pretend that this, uh, you know, we're gonna pretend that this is the, this is the pre-market data right here in yellow. Um, sorry, here you go, Brad. Okay. Uh, give me six seconds, Brad, promote to panelists. I wonder if that'll work. All right, cool. So we got this Bluebird Bio trade. Um, for the sense of time, what we're gonna talk about is, again, we, we knew it was a, a bullish retest gap on the daily. Ladies and gentlemen, trade is running. The trade is breaking out. You're missing it. Are we gonna get in right here, yes or no? Ah, you would have two weeks ago, <laughs> right? One, two, three, four, five candles of the exact same color. Five candles of the same color. Daryl said, do you chart lines for support and resistance from the after hours activity? Yes, sir, we were just talking about that about 30 minutes ago. Yep, you're exactly correct. So we're gonna take this support resistance right here based on the pre-market data. We're gonna draw a support here. We're gonna draw a support here based on the five minute chart. Okay, and we're gonna look at Bluebird Bio. And as the stock is coming down, stock is coming down, here we have a very, very nice candle right there at that support on Bluebird Bio. I'm gonna try to zoom in a little bit more if I can. It's gonna mess up my lines though. So let me just go ahead and draw these lines on Bluebird. Sorry, give me six seconds. Now honestly, this is just a random example. Uh, I, I, I really just picked this one out of a hat. Um, sorry, my lines keep getting messed up. All right, draw support resistance. Here's a resistance here, here's a support here. This is a very easy support levels to draw. Right, so you got a resistance here, support there. It's very simple. Let us know these lines on the five minute. Yes, ma'am, these are five minute lines. Five minute candles. Rebecca said, so if weekly options would not have been good, would you have used a monthly option or just buy stock? You would do stock in most cases because you do not want to day trade a weekly option, Rebecca, on honestly the vast majority of stocks out there. It's a great question. So in this situation on Bluebird Bio, let's say that um, let's say that you did the exact same thing you did earlier on blue on uh, whatever the stock we we're just looking at FLO, and let's say you wanted to get in bullish as soon as it pulled back to old resistance, new support. You wanted to place your stop right here. Oh, this is gonna be so good. So you would have done what? You would have done a limit buy in your broker, meaning you would type in a, a limit and you would type a buy order of 89.97. Why would you have done that price? Because that is your old resistance new support, right? The exact same strategy we were just talking about earlier. We mentioned on the stock we just looked at, hey, let's just short the retest at old resistance new support. This time we are buying at old resistance new support. So what if we bought at 89.97, we'd have our stop below the previous candles. Let's see if this trade works, you ready? Same exact strategy, so retest gap. Did we get filled, yes or no? 
Yes, we did. So we're in this trade. All right, we're in the trade. We're in the trade. Trade's coming down. Trade's coming down. Trade's coming down. Boom. Trade stops us out. Are we bankrupt, ladies and gentlemen? Nope. Was there a very good chance that was going to happen? Yep. Is it an absolute guarantee? Is it a fact? Is it a statistical probability on the highest terms that you are going to lose on trades? Yes, yes, and yes. They're all yes. Yeah. They're all yeses. Don't worry about it. You will lose on trades, and sometimes there's nothing you can do. You're going to lose on this trade. In this example, maybe once you see the trade not really working out, maybe you could have taken your stop up, moved it right about here, and you'd have lost about point. 8, 9R or something, but you still would have lost on that trade. So now what? We get to ask two questions. We can either say, what's the stock doing now? Or we can say, what are we going to do 10 minutes from now? We get that choice. We can have one of two cho choices. What are we going to do now? We're going to do 10 minutes from now. We've got to say, don't worry about the right now. We lost on that trade. Jeremy, are you sure you want to send us or show us a losing day trade on class two? Uh, I do, yeah. I want to show you a loser. I'm going to show you a few losers, actually. This is the first. <laughs> so now, here's what's important to recognize. We lost on that trade. We would have lost one risk unit, however much that risk unit is. Good try, folks. But now, where are we located? Where are we located? We're located at a support. All right. So we have a support level down here. So we could say, all right, well, I, we could always try this again. Right? So we could create a support level to buy the dip down here with a stop below that support. This could be one plan. So what I want someone to do, we're going to wait for just a second, but I'm going to come up with a plan, uh, a, a determination. So we could do one of two things. We determine what we're going to do 10 minutes from now, not right now. So the traders who want to take this trade, stick with me for just a second. And again, I, I really totally forget what happened with this trade. I just wrote it down. I, I really don't remember. So the traders who want to take this limit by, type in a three. The traders who want to wait for something else, type in a seven. So just remember your number. I really can't remember what this stock does. I'm just being serious. I don't have it up on any other screens. You gotta trust me on that. I have no idea. All right, so you know what you're gonna do. So let's go to the next candle. So the next candle, uh, nothing's happening there. So the traders who typed in a seven were looking for a bouncing candle. We're looking for a candle that says, uh, yes, please. The traders who typed in a three, they wanna buy at that support and see if it bounces. It is, of course, after all, a bullish retest gap. All right, next candle. That's a pretty good bullish candle. Would you guys agree? It's bouncing out of support. So how would I take this trade? Here's how I would do it. I would have my stop loss down here to exit. And I'd have my stop market for an entry. Remember, you gotta ensure that you know the difference and you gotta know how to use the stop market and the stop loss. Those are two totally different things. Stops are your friends. You can use them to enter trades and you can use them to exit trades. So a stop market would be 88.71. A stop loss would be 87.53. I don't know what trade's gonna, what trade's gonna work. It's either, it, it could roll back down and hit this one. If you typed in a three, you might miss the trade. Right? No big deal. Uh, Annie, yes, I'm getting there. Class three, tomorrow. She says, I think Jeremy's going to tell us how to do this with a smaller account. So Bluebird Bio. Right? So let's see if we trigger in. All right, we are in the trade. Target number one is going to be what? Target number one is going to be this obvious resistance right there. So Luke, you were asking earlier, Sometimes my trades don't go to 2R. That's fine. If you have an obvious resistance in your face, 
If you're trading bullish, you should probably take some position off. How much you want to take off, that's totally up to you. You could do a quarter, you could do half, you could take off all of it. You could take off an eighth, you could take off a tenth. We'll talk more about that when we create a trading plan, but this number is up to you. All I can say is sometimes on some trades, you have to learn to hold until it hurts. Steven says, take profit. You can always get back in. Exactly. So we just lost one R. Let's not forget that. So we have to make more than that to be up for the day. And we can be 50-50. So we have to make more than one R. So let's plan if we hit that price. Let's take off uh, a, a quarter right here. So what am I doing, ladies and gentlemen? I am planning ahead of time. I'm not worried about exiting when we get there. I'm telling the market what I want it to do, and then I'm going to do it when it happens. I'm not going to question anything. I'm going to make a plan, and I'm going to follow it. Right, Lauren? I'm going to be methodical about this. So Bluebird Bio. Okay, it's looking good so far. Looking good so far. Oh, man, we got so close to that target. Let me try to zoom in a little bit here. So we can delete this. So for those who typed into three, hey, good, good try. Just didn't quite get there. All right, I haven't moved my stop yet. I don't see anything yet that scares me. Nothing yet. Oh, nice, we hit our target. All right, so we hit, we hit target number one. That's cool. So now we would take our stop loss, and really I'd move my stop loss, my stop loss to get out of the trade right below the low of this candle. This one right here, nice bullish long lower shadow candle. Plus, if I do get stopped out, I'm gonna lock in a little bit of a gain, right? I'm gonna lock in a little bit of gain, a little bit of a gain. Um, now, am I gonna add and reduce or do anything like that special? No, I'm just gonna take my target and say, okay, where's the next obvious location? Up here somewhere. And from here, I have no idea if we hit that, but we're gonna to have to start trailing our stop. But there's the other three quarters of our position. So what I'm gonna do, here's the best part, folks. Look how many white candles are in a row right now on Bluebird Bio. What could we expect to happen from here? We could expect a retest, exactly. We're gonna expect a small pullback. So what are we doing? We are telling ourselves what we expect to happen in the future. We're literally creating a plan for what the future might bring us so when it happens, we don't freak out. So if we say, yeah, we might pull back, are we gonna worry if we pull back? Uh, we shouldn't. <laughs> if we say, based on this many candles, it's probably gonna pull back, and then when it pulls back, we can't get worried about it. All right, so next candle, well, it didn't pull back yet, didn't pull back yet. All right, here's some pullback coming in. Now this is a very, very nice pennant pattern right here. I like that pennant pattern. So if this thing breaks out bullish, I'm gonna move my stop right there. I'm gonna move my stop up, lock in a profit. It broke bullish. There's my new, my new stop loss. Boom. That was a really cool trade. That was awesome. Actually, I had no idea that was gonna work out that good. It was just really on my list. I had like seven or eight stocks. I just kind of picked that one at random. So now here's the, here's the coolest part of the, uh, of the thing. Did we lose on a previous trade, yes or no? Yes, we did. If we have taken one trade and lost and taken another trade and won on this exact trade, we would have made money on the day. All because we lost small. Now, what I want you to realize is I want you to realize the three tools that I used for this trade. I used support and resistance. And I used candlesticks. And I used the gap type. Knowing that it's a retest gap, expecting it to retest. Right? Expecting this to retest when it's out of support saying, yeah, it makes sense. It's supposed to be at a support. I'm gonna look to go long here. Because in trading, my friends, you want to, I know this sounds easy, but you're gonna have to remind yourself of this all the time. Buy low, sell high. Buy low, sell high. Brad, I'm gonna let you uh, answer OM's question. 
Wilson, so Jeremy, will you upload this video tonight? I'm gonna do my best, Wilson, to get this out as quickly as I can, my friend. All right, so buy low, sell high. You gotta repeat that to yourself over and over and over and over and over. Buy low, sell high, buy low, sell high, buy low, sell high. Retest gaps are the stocks that we play the absolute most. Here was another one uh, today on Micron Technology. Now this was a very small gap, so you would have had to have um, watched Micron all the time. I did not play this gap. I do watch Micron very, very often. But check out this, white candle gapping up. This is what I talked about yesterday called a micro gap. This is a micro gap. So you would not have played this unless you track Micron all the time, which I do, but I just didn't person, I just didn't have the time to trade this one today. But check this out. So on Micron, it was a retest gap. You had two choices. This is the pre-market data on a five minute chart. You could have taken the breakout of this five minute chart right there using the extended hour chart or what else could you have done? You could have taken the breakout or you could have played the retest, exactly. You could have waited for all this, let the stock come back down to here and then entry, stop, call your mama and kiss her and tell your lover because that was an amazing trade. And that's using nothing other than candlesticks Support and resistance. Make sense? A lot of this stuff out there, folks. A lot of great opportunities. Um, I think here's another one, TTWO. Take two interactive today. So this was actually a gap that you might have caught on your scanner. So uh, Lauren, I think this answers your question. So here's a gap that is uh, gapping above all of these wicks right here. So that's clearing what's called a pivot price. It's gapping right above that resistance. White candle gapping up. Johnny says, are you using trailing stops? Manually, Johnny, just like we were showing earlier in Bluebird Bio, just about 10 minutes ago. So when I'm day trading, I am manually moving my stops when the trade goes in the direction that I want it to. Now, you don't have to be by the computer every five minutes. You can set up a trade, walk away, come back an hour, move up your stop, something like that. That's usually what I do. So take two interactive TTWO. Uh, here's the five minute chart. Very, very nice gap. Folks, this is a retest gap. How many times would we have bought right there? Previously. A lot, right? Look how many white candles there are in a row. Pre-market, boom, 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 boom. Five white candles, why in the world would you buy there? You are chasing that trade like a dog chases its tail. Here comes the stock, the stock pulls back. There's your beautiful one white soldier candle pattern. You're gonna enter above the high of that candle. You initially could have tried to enter above the high of that candle, but it never went higher. You could have also tried to enter above the high of that candle, but it never went higher. So when this candle comes in, same thing. You place your entry above the high of that candle, and then Johnny, you set your stop right below there. You create how many shares you're gonna trade based on that risk size. And then you're gonna take the trade, load notice, you'll take the trade right to that resistance point, and then boom, you're done. I know it sounds simple, but it kind of is. Stock market is simple, but difficult. I know there's no chance you think that an hour and 10 minutes just went by, but it did. <laughs> that was an hour and 10 minutes, ladies and gentlemen. Tomorrow, which is class three, for those of you who are watching the recorded version, you can just go ahead and click and click on click through, uh, go ahead and click on class three if it's available. For those who are here live, I know there's a lot of questions out there. Email them to me, jeremy at reallifetrain.com. Class three is gonna be a little bit longer. I'm gonna talk about how to implement a lot of this uh, by using a smaller account, some of the steps that you have, some of the brokers that you wanna work with. We're also gonna talk about bearish gap and goes, bullish gap and goes, a little bit quicker of entries. We're gonna talk about buying power and slippage. So tomorrow's class, which is Thursday, it's gonna be probably all of two hours, maybe a little bit longer. So 
So I'm just warning you. If, you've ex if you're excited, you love this information, just get ready for class three. It's gonna be a doozy. Class four, we're gonna talk about creating a trading plan. We're gonna put a nice bow on it. We're gonna do a lot of examples. I hope this was beneficial. Trust me, if you watch this class a few times, you're gonna learn something brand new every single time. And that's because of the energy that each and every one of you is bringing to the table. So thank you so much. I cannot believe this went by that quickly. It's amazing. To wrap up tonight's class with a nice bow, be patient, wait for the retest, do not trade in the present, trade in the future, tell yourself what you're going to do in the future, and then when it gets there, do it. Be disciplined, be focused, mitigate risk, and of course, enrich lives from around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Thank you for being a real life trader. Thank you for helping us with our mission to enrich lives from all over the world, from all walks of life, geographical standpoint. And until next time, remember, love life, live life and trade it. You rock. I'll see you later.